Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to the PRL Novice Winter 2021 Championship. Uh, and boy, was that a close one. Battle Dance between Smash Barn and Death Cards uh, was very close both directions. At the end of the day, Smash Barn able to capitalize on a couple, perhaps macro misplays and a little bit of exploitation of the draft. We're able to take care of that game one. But now, whole new game, whole new slate. And after seeing the preview in the pro draft for this one, you and I are certainly excited for it. Oh yeah, I'm absolutely excited. Uh, this is uh, two very even teams, I would say. Of course, last game they had a great early game. Both teams were relatively even at about the 15 minute mark. And then like you said, just a couple big mistakes blew the game open uh, for Smash Bar and just let them uh, snowball to a win and get about 15 kills in the last 15 minutes of the game. Uh, but now, as we are moving into game two, uh, like you said, clean slate looking to this game now. And as we see the picks coming through, a lot of interesting picks on both sides. Of course, we see that Kindred, uh, not a pick that you see very often. I have heard Graham McDonald uh, has a pretty mean Kindred. And so we'll have to see if he is able to uh, be that sort of scaling AD carry in the mid lane. And of course, uh, opposite him on the rift, that Lilia being that uh, scaling AP carry for the side of death cards, but then this mid lane matchup. Maj new back on his Corky, back on that signature pick, and then the ca Cassidin as the answer into that Corky. Yeah, Cassidin actually being the answer this time around. Instead of opting for that Victor, actually, I should take a look here. I think Cassidin uh, was picked in response to the Corky. Um, so a little bit interesting. They're actually opting for a matchup that's just a little bit different uh, for Banana Union instead of sticking with what we're used to. But now, last two. Uh, picks coming in here already see Kaisa and Aphelios uh, makes me think that we're still stuck like last year I think or something like that uh, but <laughs> we'll have to see exactly how this one goes yeah at least it's not the what was it world 2019 I think where it was Zaya Kaisa every single yeah. game yeah but uh, the past is in the past. Now we're uh, looking towards this game, and yeah, that Kaisa Aphelios, uh, very close matchup in terms of early game, and then in terms of scaling. Of course, Aphelios does have that 200 years factor. Uh, he can just hit a nasty Infernum ultimate and then just kind of win a fight. But uh, they do have a lot of, uh, or sorry, the side of Smash Barn does have a lot of ways to mitigate that. They do have. Uh, the CC, especially the long range CC from Orn, to be able to sort of shut down the back line uh, of that Aphelios Lilia, as well as having the Kindred ultimate in order to save people uh, if 200 years does his thing. Uh, but uh, as we kind of see these drafts round out, uh, I don't know if, if you have any other insights, but I would say this is a very even draft, could absolutely go both ways for both teams. I mean, so well drafted uh, coming out from both sides, really showing a lot of adaptation and a lot of smart uh, counter picks and picks and uh, just well drafted overall. Yeah, I mean, well, I will say you are the expert. Remember, you're talking to the cardboard play-by-play -play <laughs> captor over here. Uh, but nonetheless, I think, the interesting thing for me here, uh, when we talk a little bit more about the draft, is just how much stock uh, that some of these teams are putting into this. Smash Barn actually picked Ritual Thresh on R1, um, which is kind of interesting. Uh, that was even before Aphelios was in the picture at all. Um, so, you know, it, it's got me thinking just how much stock they're putting into uh, that Thresh. And as you mentioned, you know, with that crowd control, certainly going to be looking towards that as Smash Barn looks to try to take a repeat of their first game. Uh, and then the fact that that Thresh is even in the bot lane uh, has to be uh, licking his lips and swinging that hook looking for the Cephelios. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that the Aphelios uh, is going to be very, very key in terms of these mid-game fights to take him out. Of course, Aphelios being uh, that AD carry, usually AD carries nowadays kind of spike on two items. Aphelios, once he gets something like, uh, I mean, any mythic item, really, he can choose any that he likes. The Immortal Shield Bow, not very common, but can choose it. Um, and then uh, that Runin's going to be a huge spike for him. And so I think he will be important in terms of the mid-game. And then uh, Ritual will definitely be looking to hook that Cassidy towards late game, especially once we see level 16 Cassidy coming out. That is uh, definitely one of the win conditions for death cards is that level 16 uh, on Cassidy uh, having a huge ult cooldown uh, reduction and a huge carry potential once he hits that late game. 
lots of crowd control, lots of scaling on both sides uh, of this draft in nearly all positions. We're just gonna have to see how the cards will fall this time as we take a quick break while we load onto the rift. Don't go anywhere, folks. Game two is coming after this break. back and forth has got me so messed up don't ignore the signs we've had enough of the whole damn thing that we got going you hold the strings without me knowing why do i have to suffer through the thinking why do i Onto the rift we go for game two of the PRL Novice Winter 2021 Split Championship. My name is Kvot. I am joined by Battle Dance. And before we get into the game, I want to give a real brief shout out to our sponsors. Thank you to Haha ha, Funny Man underscore on Twitch and Jasper George at jasper George.com. You can also use the code PRL Rogue, roguegender.com, for 10% off of your order there. Thank you so much to our sponsors for their consistent support of what we do over here at the Phoenix Rising League. And if you too would like to support us, uh, you can join the Phoenix Sub Club by hitting that purple subscription button down below. We really do appreciate any support that you all uh, are willing to give to the PRL League here, and it helps us continue to do what we do, provide you all a fantastic product and a fantastic community uh, to cultivate here. But nonetheless, we're going to be looking into this game. Looks like a few less level one shenanigans than what we saw last time around Battle Dance. Uh, as these two teams set the stage uh, for what should be a very exciting game. And setting the stage they have, I think the, the biggest statement that has come out from this game so far is Banana Uyu on that cast and opting for the Dark Seal uh, as his starting item. Of course, having a lot of confidence with that starting item. Uh, typically, we see something like the Tear uh, or uh, maybe even a Doran's Ring coming out from Cassidy and uh, wanting to build into something like that Arch Archangel Staff later. But uh, having that Tear, hoping to get ahead in this early game, uh, Definitely a, a lot of confidence coming out from the Cassidy in this matchup against uh, Corky. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see if Banana Uyu can find something different, of course, for Majnu. It's going to be slightly different this time around, right? Having to face that victor last time uh, and was predominantly winning. Have to see if that is the same case this time around. Can we talk a little bit about those that mid lane matchup? Of course, we saw Manchu on the Corky play very well. As this starts to scale and this starts to get out of hand, where are the power spikes going to be looking for between these two? I think really what it boils down to is Majnu uh, getting the Muramana and or Manimune completion. Uh, I think that is going to be a very large spike for him, going to be outputting a lot of damage on every ability, every auto, just more and more and more uh, on hit physical damage. And so I think that'll be a big power spike for him. And in terms of power spikes for Banana Uyu, I think what it really is, is that level 16. I mean, I, I know it's a long way from now. Uh, but a level 16 Cassidy can really just 1v5 a game, and I think that that is kind of how Banana Uyu is playing. He did build that Dark Seal, uh, likely for some early game aggression. Uh, hopefully Lilia will visit his lane, but uh, I really do think that this uh, Cassidy is kind of their late game insurance policy for death cards. Grant going for a little bit of an invade here, currently working his way on through that blue side jungle on the top side of the map and perhaps even something that Danui has to be careful about on that Cassidy. Uh, but actually a ping going down in the top lane. So I think uh, this Kindred actually gonna shift and work up there. Look for one onto Mahar here early. There's the knock up as this Orin combo starts to get unleashed on going uh, to try to find this. That's a flash burn already for Mahar and trying to get it, but is not going to be able to find that one. Oh, so close, but still gonna be forced to reset, maybe even forced to use teleport to get back. Uh, yeah, Mahar might be uh, looking to use that teleport, uh, possibly trying to stop Germ from being able to freeze the lane, but uh, at this point, Mahar maybe just uh, walk back to lane, and yeah, it looks like he is, and so uh, even though Grant McDonald did force the flash, not forcing that second summoner spell, uh, good on Mahar, able to hold that summoner spell down, but uh, now it looks like Grant McDonald may be looking mid uh, after, I believe, taking that Scuttle Crab in the top river. And instead, uh, looks like they're just pinging him off and just looking to go back to farming his jungle. Of course, he did have that big invade on Lilia. And now, Ooh. oh, he is going mid. He is going for it here. Looks like a little bit of change of plans, but it's just going to be a little bit more damage. As Bananuyu was significantly uh, careful there that time around. But uh, I'll have to see what comes next. By the way, we're 30 seconds away from this first Drake coming up. And what we know about these two teams, especially Smash Burn, is that they were very quick to get to do these Drakes last time around. We'll see if that repeats this time around, but you have to imagine that's the case with Grant already on the bot side of the map and probably looking towards that Drake in a moment. And considering that the first Drake is Infernal Drake, uh, gonna be a nice one to take for a little bit of early game damage. Of course, nothing like a, an early Ocean Drake or anything like that, not going to be swingy in any of the lanes, but of course, getting that objective ball rolling is always important in the early game. And it looks like uh, Majnu did just back, but Zerial uh, and Ritual uh, may be looking to, well, uh, now, now that I say that, Grant McDonald just going to take that back, right. and so well, looks like neither team really looking to prioritize Dragon at the current moment. Doesn't quite look like it. Kind of surprising, to be honest, especially given what we were seeing last game. Last game, it was all about those objective timers, especially around the Drakes. Uh, by the way, meanwhile, Jermican has to use the flash to get away here after that appearance from Matsy on the top side of the map. We are oh so close to level six when things start to get a little bit more interesting, especially with Matsy on that Lilia. So that'll be something to watch out for, especially in the next game. And I think that in for Jermican right there, he thought Matsy was level six, which is why he gave that very respectful flash, not wanting to get slept and then uh, taken down by the jungler. But uh, I think uh, blowing that flash going to make him a bit of a target uh, for the next five minutes. Uh, but now we see Mirth being the target. Mirth forcing to flash away here as well. Squires Boom gonna pick off a handful of members here of Smash Barn approaching this river as now they turn their attention towards this Drake. Matsy 
not at level six though. Oh, just a little unfortunate. But you trying to use this Rift Walker to zone some of these members away. There's a dredge line uh, coming into a ritual here on the backside. Blast cone trying to get away here. Ritual trying to find something, but just gonna get uh, slowed up by Banana Uyu. And it's gonna be first blood to Matsy actually taking that one away. Now with a swing of the staff here, looking for a little bit more. And this Avelio's damage starting to come in crucial here as well as Banana Uyu is gonna pick up another one. Multiple members going down here to teleport. There's Call of Forge got actually knocking up three here. Yeah. It's this fight is actually gonna continue. They're going for broke here, but Jarbakin's going to lose his life for it. Axify might be looking for a little bit more. Some of these members Smash Barn aren't careful, but it looks like neither team gonna get the Drake this time around, perhaps. A couple of things about that fight. Number one, Mirth, absolutely nasty play on the Nautilus, getting so many crucial hooks, uh, stopping that knockup from Germican. Well, now I think it's caught out. Oh, <laughs> the well. dredge line was so close. The dredge line was so close to the wall. Yeah, he was the hero, and now he he has to be the zero. You know, every 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 up has its down. Uh, but yeah, uh, in terms of that fight, he was absolutely incredible. Uh, and now we see that uh, two kills have gone down onto that uh, not not Nautilus, uh, Cassidy. Uh, and now that Cassidy has five stacks on Dark Seal, has that tier, and of course has that lost chapter as well. Uh, likely looking to build that into an Everfrost, an item that we have been seeing crop up quite a lot lately, uh, especially on these late game carries similar to the Cassidy. And so. Uh, accelerating a Cassadin in any game is always very dangerous, and so we'll have to watch out for Banana Uyu coming up in this game, see if he can uh, sort of use the kills that he has gotten and use the advantage that he has gained uh, to further the Death Card's play in this game. And that's the thing, right, I think, is that when you're looking at the game state overall, sure, it's not that big of a lead, but the fact that it is so much focused onto Banana Uyu right now, I think, uh, is certainly going to be a good thing for the death cards. I have seen this player uh, single-handedly carry things, particularly with Oriana, which has been banned away in the past two for long. Uh, but at the same time, like, still going to be just as good here on the cast, and especially as we get towards the later stages of this game, as we keep talking about. Uh, going to be a threat and a thorn in the side of Smash Barn, who will not just be able to smash through the rift this time around. Jermican, though, trying to knock up Mahar here uh, and get a little bit more done. There's a lot of damage there, and actually going to find that one. That is going to be a solo kill onto Majnu in the mid lane for Banana Uyu. Now going up three kills, getting a little bit of extra gold in the pocket. And the Death Guards, too, are also going to get this rift hero. That is enormous for Banana Uyu, getting that solo kill and also getting the flash from Majnu. Uh, Majnu thought he would be able to get away from the Cassadin damage, but of course Cassadin's Q being that point and click damage, uh, just getting a lot out of that kill, uh, the flash, the kill, and then of course that Rift Herald as well being secured by Death Cards does mean that they are going to be up a significant amount in this early game, 1100 gold, and a lot of it being focused onto that Cassadin is going to mean he is is going to mean he will become a monster uh, in these next few minutes. Already has seven stacks on that Dark Seal, and you know, even though they lost last game, of course, coming into this game with confidence with that Dark Seal on the Cassadin, now it's paying off. I mean, he's got a lot of value out of that first item and uh now he's uh, got three kills got a huge shutdown and banana you definitely set up for success absolutely and so we'll have to see uh if this player can really uh bring it in here for the death cards and deal death to their opponent uh but you know all in the meantime uh it's really gonna be a matter of where can smash barn really start to try to press their advantage here especially in the next couple of minutes still another two minutes until this next drake comes up and perhaps that's one thing one saving grace for smash barn right now i guess is that they do have those drakes to their advantage man uyu has to be careful not to get a little bit too aggressive especially while grant is in the area but i mean nonetheless you know what what is smash barn really looking to do here in the next little bit of time maybe try to mitigate the pressure or try to get themselves on advantage somewhere else I think really what they could be looking to do is shut down the Cassidy. I mean, so much gold is riding on that one champion, a 300 gold shutdown as well as the 300 gold for just killing him to begin with. And so I think if they are able to get onto that very slippery Cassidy pick, of course, having that ultimate, but if they are able to get onto him and are able to shut him down, it'll mean a lot uh, for Smash Barnes 
return into this game. Uh, they do have a dragon, and so uh, if they are able to uh, get an early rotation onto the next dragon, it is a cloud dragon coming up. And so this does mean that the two souls that are possible in this game are the mountain and the ocean, two very impactful souls. So Smash Barn could just be looking to control and contest objectives throughout these next few minutes, uh, especially setting up around that dragon. Absolutely, and you've got to think that that's probably going to be uh, what they're looking to, especially so far. Again, relatively, they've been doing very well in terms of making sure that they're always on time and always on the clock. And speaking of that clock, now down to 45 seconds here. As you'll notice, these players start to approach the bottom side of the map, including Banana Uyu. Might be looking to try to get a little more vision down as well as helping out uh, with this bot lane. Uh, and overall, going to be a little bit more safe given that uh, first ultimate in their pocket. But of course, gonna have to see exactly how this one plays out. Uh, also, Feast just used for Mahar up there in the top lane. Not quite sure what that's all about, um, but looks like a lot of damage trading actually coming out of both of these top laners right now. Um, so a little bit interesting up there top lane has not been something that we've talked about a ton here uh but you know both these players just kind of having their own good old time up there yeah it's a really just a tank v tank matchup i mean they're just smacking each other uh, cho'gath of course feasting on the uh, minions in order to get stacks on them for that ultimate uh, giving him a lot of hp uh, as we see now rift herald dropped in the mid lane gonna get a few plates down as smash or sorry death cards now looking to rotate to this dragon Looks like they may be uncontested on it. Seems like Grant McDonald just going to farm out his jungle, taking that blue and then moving to those wolves. And so uh, Death Card's just gonna be able to get their first dragon of the game. And we'll see what soul comes up as Majinu takes a big chunk from Banana Uyu. It is going to be the Mountain Soul to come up this time around. So we'll certainly play uh, a little bit more interesting here. Could certainly uh, provide a lot of benefits. We we saw, you know, what kinds of shenanigans that Majnu could pull, uh, given a little bit of shielding last time around. Mountain Soul would be beneficial. <laughs> True. Other side of the map, we're talking about an Aphelios, we're talking about a Kassin, both of which can certainly benefit from having a little bit of extra damage potential. And also, we do see a lot of defensive itemization coming out for both teams. Of course, having those top uh, tank top laners and then the Lilia uh, building in that Seeker's Arm Guard, likely looking to build a Zanya's first item, uh, as well as uh, the supports both building into a lot of uh, defensive stats, uh, looking to build a lot of health, a lot of armor. And so Mountain Soul would be huge for both teams. And uh, just like last game, we do see a one-to-one -one Drake score uh, at about the 15 minute mark. And so now that both teams uh, have kind of slowed down the objective timers a little bit, we're not seeing the breakneck pace of Dragons that we saw uh, last game. We'll have to see how they play the map uh, between objectives. Uh, we haven't really seen a whole lot of uh, life from either jungler. Uh, they've mostly just been farming up, of course, uh, Lilia having a bit of a farm lead on that Kindred just because Lilia has an just insane speed uh, when it comes to clearing the jungle. Uh, we'll have to see where they choose to impact the map in these next uh, three or so minutes before Dragon comes up. And you know, in fairness, I think that at both the farmers jungling, we probably could have seen coming holistically, right? Um, mm -hmm. Given a Lilia, given a Kindred, both these champions certainly going to be looking towards the later stages of this game to put in a little bit more work in some of those team fights. Uh, but it looks like actually Grant might be doing a little bit of alcove game in here in a moment. Uh, now actually going to just find this onto Mirth, forcing that flash away here. Flash four from Ritual as well. Boxy was up. Moonlight Vigil going to come in, try to get a little more damage down. Ritual taking out a half health. That's going to be immediately taken down. Teleports coming in as well. So many teleports actually coming in. But all the meanwhile, there's the Lambs' fight to keep Grant just alive for a little while longer. Axified going down next. And now there's the call of the fourth god here. Banana Uyu going on a rampage before getting shut down. And that fight largely goes in favor of Smash. Ash Barn as they look uh, to take themselves back in this game. 
that is one of the biggest uh, advantages that ha uh, that Smash Barn has over other teams is just their global presence on the map. Uh, pretty much every game, uh, anytime anything happens, they just have TP after TP after TP coming off uh, for these lanes. I mean, they're very good at collapsing on a lane uh, using those teleports effectively. And I think in that fight, they were just able to collapse so many different members and overwhelm uh, the side of death cards, even though they did have a big gold lead at that point in the game, uh, Smash Barn just out, out macroing them with the teleports, and now uh, the gold gap has shrunk significantly. It's only about a 700 gold difference, which at 16 minutes into the game means uh, a little less than it would earlier in the game, and of course as the game goes on, it'll mean less and less and less, and so uh, Smash Barn definitely battling back in this game, not ones to just sort of uh, turn over and give up the game. I mean, they are really trying to fight for this win, and uh, I think that uh, Death cards do have a lot of scary scaling, especially in terms of that Aphelios and Cassidy. But uh, if any team is going to come back into this one, it would be Smash Barn. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one of the things, like talking about uh, last game and probably how they were winning a lot of their regular season games, had to come down to their objective control, had to come down to their macro decision making that we've seen so far. I mean, these players have been playing together for a decent amount of time in a lot of cases here. Um, you know, a lot of the core of this roster has stuck together, so certainly probably on the same page in a lot of these decisions and can just move around the map very effectively, calling that bottom lane play uh, in this game and then capitalizing uh, in the last game as well. That'll be exactly how Smash Barn's going to be looking to come back in this game. And to be fair, one could argue they are already back, making the scoreline very uh, much more close to even. Uh, and perhaps something where uh, now Banana Nuyu is slightly less of a threat than he once was. Uh, and yeah, I agree. I think they have sort of neutralized that threat, but uh, one of the things they have actually done, or I should say Majnu has done, is he has built that Hex Drinker. We do see that uh, coming in the inventory of the Corky, and I think that will delay his power spikes by a significant margin. I think that uh, Corky really starts to do damage when he has that two or three item mark, and I think uh, spending the nine, or sorry, uh, I actually don't know how much <laughs> Hex Drinker costs, but spending a good amount of gold on that item, uh, going to ensure that his power build is just pushed later and later into this game and i think that corky gonna need to make a big splash uh in the next few minutes if they want to really have a chance as we now see them setting up around the dragon both teams moving in both teams are moving in smash barn trying to close in on this drake but might not have enough time call the forge god gonna land on the Avellas here the Avellas kind of caught out and on that side of the map on the meanwhile smash barn slowly starting to work through some of this fight into death guards were just so split up they were on opposite sides of the dragon pit they take the drake but they're going to go three down in the process and smash barn is continuing to build themselves uh closer and closer to getting the gold advantage yeah, I feel like uh, Death Cards did not play their cards right in that fight. I think that uh, they got the drink, but at what cost? I mean, they lost three members. They're going to lose this mid tower as well. Uh, they're going to lose a lot of jungle as well, considering uh, Grant McDonald is moving into that top side jungle, going to look to steal a lot away from Lilia. And uh, they are now 2-1 in the Dragon score, but it costs so much. Uh, Smash Barn now actually taking the gold lead, uh, about four or 500 gold up in this game, which uh, again, doesn't mean a whole lot at 19 minutes but uh, this does it does signal that smash barn going to fight back in this game and they're going to take uh good fights when they can and i think that was a very good fight to take for smash barn absolutely i mean again the momentum so much right now in smash barn's favor uh even if the gold is looking very even you have to imagine that just being able now to take whatever part of the map they want to uh, really right after uh that uh those three members of death cards going down uh you know gonna have to see uh how they continue to build on this and i think you know again the other thing i want to comment on there is how far apart some of the members of death cards were they were scattered all over somewhere in the pit there was like the Aphelios uh sitting on one of the sides on the other side of the dragon pit you had a couple of other members so so split up and i think that's what allowed smash barn to effectively just roll through that fight uh you know they're doing an excellent job here overall of grouping up together and playing the map uh very well but we'll have to see if they can keep that up if the death cards can try to put their heels in, dig their heels in, uh, and take care of business. As mentioned, they have two drakes to their name right now, so that is one thing going for them, and so we'll have to see if they can keep that up in the next three minutes. 
and yeah i see chat talking about it a little bit and uh, i think that uh chat is mentioning that death cards are a bit afraid to pull the trigger they uh know that there's a lot riding on this they know that they are down one game in grand finals and i feel like uh they're just a little bit afraid to engage a little bit um willing to sort of give fights when they don't think they can win them and i think that in terms of winning a fight death cards have everything that they need to do oh maju goes in maju going in just gonna blow up axified mirth gonna try to get the dredge line but no it's gonna hit a minion and now all the meanwhile some of the members of the death cards are going down once more great mcdonald gonna pick up another one here onto mirth banana uyu in trouble gonna get taken down by the corky and that's exactly what you were talking about earlier was getting this corky in power positions it's a double kill for Zerial as well and Smash Bart is going to turn their attention to the Baron. And my god, I was just talking about how Death Cards were a bit afraid to engage, and then Majinu pulls the Leroy Jenkins, just packages into two members, and then it ends up working out. I mean, Jerem with the flank teleport, and then just uh, they were able to one shot Axify, getting no value out of 200 years, the champion. And then uh, from there, it just kind of was a wash for Death Cards, just one after the other falling. And uh, now Smash Barn have taken the Baron, Smash Barn have taken a 5k gold lead in the blink of an eye and now this game looking incredibly in the favor of smash barn they have three shutdowns five and oh for Zerial on that kaisa as well now looking to uh build those core items get very ahead in terms of itemization and i mean now with that baron they're gonna be able to take a lot of the standing gold on the map and uh smash barn have done it again they've come back into this one see roy in the chat assassin corky i think it was <laughs> yeah. assassin corky but i mean at the same time right now if you are the death cards with this draft you've got to be thinking this Ephalios is so susceptible we were talking so much about the amount of crowd control that's on both sides of the map uh, particularly here on Smash Barn with what we're talking about with the Orn, with a little bit of the Corky, with the Thresh, all of these threats that could very uh, make this fragile Aphelios just go down so quickly, uh, especially when you know, you know, given that Mana Mune is completed right now for Majinu uh, that you were talking about earlier, so much like we've got to play protect the president almost a little bit with this Aphelios in the composition and that's just something that death, death cards haven't really been doing so far and I think it's cost them in the last two fights. I couldn't agree more. I think that it really has cost them a lot to just kind of uh, let their backline get rolled over. And uh, while it is definitely difficult to stop, oh, oh man, who are you trying to get something done, but now it's Mirth in trouble getting hooked up there by Ritual. Now Killer Instinct, Zero going into the back line. It's actually going to be able to get the one onto uh, this Nautilus. Now could be in a little bit of trouble running the wrong direction, but Jorbikin has come up from behind, and now it's four members of Smash Barn all around there, grouping up so well. And now we're going to see Majnu going on our Rampage once more. Jorbikin picking up another kill. And again, it's Smash Barn grouping together and playing these team fights brilliantly. And I think Smash Barn, uh, Kaisa, of course, having that killer instinct. I think the entire team of Smash Barn has the killer instinct. First, we see Majnu just packaging into several, and now we see Zerial just going in 1v4 just to get the pick in the back line, and it just works out so effortlessly. I mean, they just get so much damage down and then are able to get out safely. Uh, they get out, they get the dragon, and then they get tier two mid. Uh, now could be looking to sort of walk top as Jerem getting a little caught out he is a tank though oh and ritual with that lantern getting him out of safety oh. Banana, you, you are not this strong, my friend. I know you're really looking for something, but I don't think you're going to find it. Now you could be in trouble in the opposing jungle. Going to be able to get the one on the ritual here, but here comes the Corky here as well. And just going to blow up Banana Uyu here. Going unstoppable now. That's 5, 2, and 9 on this Corky. All of those kills have been, uh, or a lot of those kills have been within the last 10 minutes here even. Mahar now in trouble as well. Currently flashless and is going to get taken down as well. Is going to get one for the road, uh, but all the meanwhile, Smash Barn still just fending off threat after threat. And we do see a bad trade and then a very good trade for death cards. Banana Uyu trades his life for rituals, the supports, which uh, not a great trade, but then uh, Mahar really bringing up the rear, getting that uh, feast kill onto Zerial. Uh, feast doing a just an immaculate amount of true damage and just being able to take him down. Uh, does get a thousand gold shut down onto that Cho'Gath. And while Cho'Gath is not the best champion to get it he is still uh getting a lot of value out of that 
Uh, speaking of value, uh, we are now seeing the Orn value come in. He is upgrading items left and right. He has upgraded Zeriel's item. Uh, he has now upgraded Majinu's item as well. And so now uh, just going to have even more of an advantage in this late game, uh, having huge mythic items, just so much uh, extra stats, just an extra gold value coming out for these items. Uh, Jermican really playing for the team this game. Uh, usually a player who sort of likes to play bruisers, likes to get in there and sort of carry the team fight by himself. But now on that Orn pick, going to make sure that the other carries of his team are set up to succeed. Yeah, absolutely. And so now, though, as we take a look at this, you mentioned Mahar got the shutdown and Banana Uyu is two levels away. Hold that thought actually for a moment. Mahar now caught off with a package coming in from the core. He teleports to try to save things from Banana Uyu, but I don't think you're going to save much of anyone at this stage in the game. Death Guards and main appearance might be looking to try to punish Banana Uyu, trying to go in, trying to find something, but look at how much damage that rocket does. It was a single rocket. It took a quarter of Banana Uyu's health. What can you even do? <laughs> I, yeah, I think Banana Uyu, uh, he can do a lot of damage, but he really just gets poked out of these fights. And uh, while he does uh, have one level to go until he hits that 16, going to be a bit before he can get there. And then Majnu, uh, Majnu and Zero can play so dangerous in these fights because uh, Ritual can just be there to keep them safe. And uh, now looking to push down this top tier two, looking to stop the backs as we see Grant McDonald and Jeremican pushing the inhibitors in the base of death cards just a 3-1-1 setup uh, not one you see all that often but it's working out i think it was working out in large part because of the state of the minion waves i mean that middle mid lane was already pushing in just needed uh at this rate apparently the kindred who is one level up on mahar right now um a little bit interesting there as well Natsy about to get blown up it's going to go bold in the back a little more time mahar is coming in here and is going to find one with this feast but the meanwhile banana uyu trying to find something here in the bot lane it's just going to continue to get that health bar deleted and smash barn is trying to uh ravage this base right now that's the second inhibitor down they'll be looking for the nexus turrets in a moment grant mcdonald actually could have been caught out just a little bit more trench lines does not quite connect there's knock up on a two moonlight vigil is going to come in here but it might just not be enough damage here jarmic can go and go and there's a lambs fight second time used and it's used beautifully to keep some of these members alive mahar is going to have to run for the hills majinu going legendary now and it's going to try to find another one on to marit there's the double banana uyu going in once more the rift walker still not quite at level 16 the win condition here for this team but it might not be enough at this point smash barn is looking to go ahead and run away from this one but nonetheless uh, Actually, they're going to have to get chased down here by Banana Uyu. Banana Uyu actually going to be able to find one onto this Kindred. Mahar going to be able to find another one here, and perhaps some shutdowns coming in clutch for the Death Guards. We'll see if they can hold on here for a little while longer. Now, Jermican is going to start to get blown up here and taken down. The Death Guards are going to be able to at least get some kills on the board. Can Jermican find a trade here at the very least? Okay, no. Looks like Jermican's going to be able to escape, but nonetheless, uh, impressive work that the Death Charge going on that chase, and you certainly don't want to have your back turned towards a Cassidy, or away from a Cassidy, I should say. <laughs> right, and I think Death Cards, they had so much uh, value in that team fight from the Hex Drinkers, uh, which have now been upgraded into the Mob Malmorius. Uh, an item that we don't see coming out very often, but the uh, magic damage shields as well as the magic resist coming out for those key carries in uh, Grant McDonald and Majnu on the Kindred and the Corky respectively, just able to survive for so long against Banana Uyu, he's just not able to do what Kassadin does. Now that he is 16 though, uh, it's gonna be a huge threat in team fights. He has the Void Staff, he has the uh, Seraph's Embrace as well as that Everfrost for the added bit of CC, going to just be able to blow up these members. Uh, and I think that a lot of shutdowns going over to the side of death cards. This does close the gold gap a bit. It is now only at 9k, but this does mean uh, that it's the Smash Runner is still uh, pretty far. And so only uh, at 9k. Right. You, you know, I, I, I believe before it was like 13 or something. So <laughs> you know, they're, they're doing better. They are doing better and I'll give them credit for that. But, you know, in fairness here, like two smash barn right now i don't think in just a raw 5v5 team fight you're going to see uh, a lot come out of the death cards here right it's going to be about if smash barn turns their backs and if banana you can find these picks with rift walker and things like that mahar getting knocked up here with the call of the forge god trying to find a lot of damage here and actually zero getting taken down rather low 
but Mahar is going to go down nonetheless. That was a last ditch feast. Uh, Banana Uyu waiting in the bush here. Might be looking for something. Going to try to find this one, but that is right on top of this Kindred who has Lamb's Respite. Now there's three other members there. Zero going to find that kill onto uh, that Kastin. And now Axify trying to flash in. Lamb's Respite going to go out here as well. Uh, all these members staying alive. There's a death sentence as well. And Smash Barn is just going to clean house. It's a double kill for Zero. And that is almost assuredly the game. And the Lamb's Respite just being the perfect counter uh, to... Oh, I believe. Oh, that's a surrender coming yeah, out. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, the Lamb's Respite just being a perfect counter to Lilia's ultimate, that Lilting Lullaby, uh, just means that you can get nothing out of it. I mean, everybody's asleep and everybody just uh, is invincible as well. And so, uh, yeah, a very clean game coming out from Smash Barn. They did look uh, quite dangerous in that early game, getting taken down, uh, getting a huge uh, gold lead for death cards. But then a uh, couple key fights, a couple key victories, uh, just pulling them back into it and making sure that Smash Barn take that one. Now 2-0 in this series. Death cards were oh so close. It looked so promising there for such a long period of time. You mentioned they got ahead a little bit in gold. They had, they even had the first Drake of the game, right? Uh, and they were doing very well overall. But at the end of the day, they just couldn't quite find a raw way to close it out. I mean, even look at that damage graph right now. There was no answer for Majnu on this Corky, uh, absolutely blowing some of these members of the Death Cards uh, to smithereens uh, as we got later and later to the stage of this game. And that level 16 was just barely hit by Banana Uyu towards the end. Yeah, the Kassadin pick, even though he was heavily accelerated in the game, you know, he had two kills in the beginning of the game. He even got a third, I believe, uh, towards the mid game. And then he just had such a big item lead. But uh, with some smart itemization coming out from Smash Barn and then a couple great plays around him, uh, just make sure that the Kassadin can't do anything. He really didn't uh, have the ability to just run rampant in those team fights. And it was thanks to, uh, in large part, the CC coming out from Smash Barn. You know, they had the Orn, they had the... Uh, uh, thresh in order to provide enough CC to keep Cassidy on the back foot. And uh, in the end, it kind of just came down to uh, a bit of uh, mechanical prowess from uh, Smash Barn, just making sure that uh, the enemies can't do what they want to do and Smash Barn can kind of just do uh, their thing in team fights. Absolutely. Real quick thoughts. We'll be getting into game three in just a little bit. But before we do, is it time to ban the Corky? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, Anivia has been a common ban in these, and I think that you should still keep that one at bay, but I think uh, Corky as well needs to hit that list. I think giving over something like the Udyr uh, could be a big possibility. Uh, I mean, Udyr is very strong, but I think Udyr doesn't have near the carry potential of Corky, and so we'll have to see how death cards sort of change their perspective on draft as we move into game three. We'll have to see what the death cards do decide to do. I believe they will be on red side here. Uh, so we'll have to see what they decide uh, for. But of course, that will be coming after we take a little bit of a break. Don't go anywhere, folks. Game three is going to be coming up shortly after this break. Both teams are moving in. Smash Barn trying to close in on this Drake, but they might not have enough time. Call the Forge got to get a land on the Abella's here. The Abella's kind of caught out and on that side of the map. On the meanwhile, Smash Barn slowly starting to work through some of this fight. And some Death Guards are just so split up. They were on opposite sides of the Dragon Pit. They take the Drake, but they're in terms of winning a fight. Death Guards have everything that they need to do. Oh, Mashu goes in. Mashu going in. Just going to blow up. That's a fine. Mirth going to try to get the dredge line, but no, it's going to hit a minion. And now on the meanwhile, some of the members of the Death Guards are going down. One once more, Great McDonald going to pick up another one here onto Mirth Banana Uyu in trouble and going to get taken down by the Corky. And that's exactly what you were talking about earlier, was getting this Corky in power positions. Well, it is definitely difficult to stop. Oh, oh Banana Uyu trying to get something done, but now it's Mirth in trouble, getting hooked up there by Ritual. Now Killer Instinct Zero going into the back line. It's actually going to be able to get the one onto uh, this Nautilus. Now could be in a little bit of trouble running the wrong direction, but Jermikin has come up from behind, and now it's four members of Smash Barn all around there, grouping up so well. And now we're going to see Majnu going, oh, my friend, I know you're really looking for something, but I don't think you're going to find it. And now you could be in trouble in the opposing jungle. Going to be able to get the one onto Ritual here, but here comes the Corky here as well, and just going to 
blow up Banana Uyu here. Going unstoppable now. That's five, two, and nine on this Corky. All of those kills have been, uh, or a lot of those kills have been within the last 10 minutes here even. Mahar now in trouble as well. Currently flashless, and it's going to get taken down to base right now. That's a second inhibitor down. They'll be looking for the Nexus turrets in a moment. Grant McDonald actually could have been caught out just a little bit more. Dredge Line does not quite connect. There's a knock up on a two. Moonlight Vigil is going to come in here, but it might just not be enough damage here. Jarmic can go and go, and there's a Lambs Rift fight. Second time used, and it's used beautifully to keep some of these members alive. Mahar is going to have to run for the hills. Majnu going a legendary now, and it's going to try to find another one on to Marit. There's the double banana Uyu going in once more. The Rift Walker still not quite at level 16. The win condition here for this team, but it might not be enough at this point. Smash Barn is looking to go ahead and run away from this one, but nonetheless, uh, actually, they're going to have to get chased down here by Banana Uyu. Banana Uyu actually going to be able to find one onto this Kindred. Mahar going to be able to find another one here, and perhaps some shutdowns coming in clutch for the Death Guards. We'll see if they can hold on here for a little while longer. Now, Jerrigan is going to start to get blown up here and taken down. The Death Guards are going to be able to at least get about if Smash Barn turns their backs and if Banana Uyu can find these picks with Rip Walker and things like that. Mahar going to get knocked up here with the Gall of the Forge God, trying to find a lot of damage here, and actually, Zerial getting taken down rather low, but Mahar is going to go down nonetheless. That was a last ditch feast. Uh, Banana Uyu waiting in the bush here, might be looking for something, gonna try to find this one, but that is right on top of this Kindred who has Lamb's Respite. Now there's three of them members there, Zero gonna find that kill onto uh, that Kasten, and now Axify trying to flash in, Lamb's Respite's gonna go out here as well. Uh, all these members staying alive, there's a death sentence as well, and Smash Barn is just gonna clean house. It's a double kill for Zero, and that is almost a sure. The back and forth.